So a really interesting start to a Sunday today. I've been invited to uh, someone I know who's got um, a bit of land and a private little airfield. And today he's having his first official fly-in. And that is where he invites guests with other aeroplanes and they come to visit the airfield, have um, a little bit of barbecue and uh, you know some snacks and, and drinks and whatever, and uh, just basically talk aeroplanes. But today, a helicopters arriving or wasp helicopters arriving so we're all waiting in anticipation for it to arrive i can't wait personally hello i'm hax i'm a filmmaker and a storyteller i love to travel meet fascinating people go to interesting places and discover amazing things come along with me as i search for the fascinating the interesting and the amazing So I've just arrived at this small airfield in Kent and a few planes have already arrived. <laughs> this, I think, is a Boeing Stearman, probably built in the 1940s and used as a trainer for American Navy pilots. So I can hear something now and apparently he's coming over from the north. So uh, this is exciting stuff. So the WASP helicopter was manufactured by the Westland uh, Helicopter Company and it was developed and introduced into the Royal Navy service in 1963 and was designed to be small enough to be able to land and take off on the back of Royal Navy frigates. It was also designed to be able to carry two small torpedoes, homing torpedoes, for anti-submarine warfare.
I am John Heath. I am the pilot and the owner of this WASP helicopter. Built in 1965 for the Royal Navy. Uh, they uh, mainly flew off uh, Leander-class frigates um, in the 60s and 70s and its main purpose was an anti-submarine role. So under here it had uh, a torpedo fitted um, and it also actually used to carry a, a nuclear depth charge. They were in commission up until about 1980. This particular aircraft was based down in both Porton and uh, Boscombe Down in Wiltshire. It was sold to uh, the, the Royal New Zealand Navy. So it spent 10 years on HMS Canterbury down in New Zealand. Uh, and then it went off for a few years for peacekeeping in uh, Papua New Guinea. So that's its main, main role. And I was always wanting to uh, be in the Royal Navy and couldn't for medical reasons. Um, I got my pilot's license um, and I was flying for a number of years uh, and then I saw a, an advert for a, a wasp for sale and I thought I've just got to see if I can afford it. Well obviously you couldn't really but then you got just sucked into it um, so I ended up buying it uh, and so in a roundabout way I am uh, flying a wasp helicopter which I always wanted to do as a child. Um, so that's how I came to own it. But because there are only four wasps flying in the world, I wanted it to be restored back to its original markings of the, the 60s. So in 2021, I had it completely resprayed back to the original markings uh, of HMS Arethusa. 426 is the flight number for the, uh, the frigate they were on. So. Um, HMS Arethusa was uh, flight number was 426, but the actual marking of the aircraft is on the, the tail. So this, this aircraft in the Navy was called XT-435. I'm not a Navy pilot. I did my training at Biggin Hill um, and uh, that was back in 2007. You've got to do a minimum of 45 hours training. The average that it takes people is 70 and I got my license I think after 57 hours um, in a Schweitzer helicopter which is of half the size of this and it's got a, a bubble canopy. Uh, I try and fly the WASP every couple of weeks so it's about 20-25 times a year depending on the weather. Um, obviously uh, I'd like to fly more but with a, a fuel consumption of a gallon a minute, it uh, <laughs> restrains you somewhat. <laughs> Normally, to learn to fly uh, a, a type of aircraft is five hours, but for the WASP helicopter, it's a 10 hour course of which there was quite an extensive ground school in terms of how the engine works and uh, for just sort of very basic maintenance, which is more than you do on a conventional CFA aircraft. Compared to a, a, a modern aircraft, the WASP is slightly more difficult to fly, mainly because uh, it's designed that the tail folds when it's on board a ship. So there's a lot more rigging that goes along back to the, uh, the tail rotor. So the first thing that you notice um, from f flying a modern aircraft to, to this is that the input, the power input for the pedal is a lot stiffer um, and it's a lot more ru rudimentary. Mo modern aircraft have digital cockpits and things like this. Everything in there, as you can see, is analog. So, but that's part of the fun of flying it. So this is a turn up for the books. I've just been invited by another pilot, Jonathan, who's got his plane here, um, to go with him to fly to another airfield, which is probably about 10, 15 minutes away, he says, um, to do a, a land and a turnaround and, and fly back, uh, just for a jaunt, really. Um, so I'm going to take him up on it. My name's Jonathan Harbottle. Well, the plane is a Eurofox. It's made in uh, uh, Slovakia and actually put together not a long way away from here, Luke's Field, which is another private strip uh, in Kent. And it's uh, a light sport aircraft. So it's not like the old Cessnas, but it's also not just a microlight. So it's 560 kilograms, it's factory made. And this means that you can carry full fuel 
with full luggage, there's about 20 kilos of luggage and two people, single engine, it's a very efficient Austrian engine called Rotax which are in most of the light sport aircraft now. Um, I'm burning about 13 litres an hour if you're interested uh, and the maintenance is very light on these things, I mean it's brand new, I got it two years ago and uh, we spec'd it up and um, I've been absolutely delighted with it. So it'll fly at around 110 miles an hour um, and it stays in the air about six hours with full fuel. Um, you'd want to stop uh, before then for comfort breaks. Some of these farm strips are a bit like um, crazy golf where everyone's different and uh, you know, you've got to have your wits about you but I think so as long as you set your own personal targets and they're realistic, it is a safe form of uh, entertainment. My father flew in the 60s and 70s and so I was in a carry cot at a very young age flying to France and things and um, so I must have got the bug there and I, I've just always enjoyed that freedom of getting off into the air and uh, yeah, it sounds a bit trite but you know it is really a super feeling and you never get tired of it. Um, yeah it's just something to get away, you have to concentrate and focus on that and that's quite good because you know if you're working hard in your day job um, it's quite good to have something that really absorbs you and this certainly ought to absorb you and it does. So I'm just, yeah, when I, when I get tired of doing it I might try something else but at the moment I'm loving it. Yeah, I mean I'm a Chartered Surveyor Town Planner, I run a business um, out of Amersham but we work nationally. Um, I'm in a position where I've got a team of four or five, we've got some good schemes on, uh, it's got some really good people so now I'm hoping to be able to, when it's flyable, because uh, we're living in the UK so we've got to keep it real, um, is be able to, in theory, when it's flyable, get out. Like today, I mean, it's bank holiday, but you know, if this had been a normal working week day, I hope I would have been able to come out. And so that's, I mean, just in the last year when I've been able to do that, it's been such a great, I've met so many more people, and there's so much community spirit with these, uh, the light sport flying. Today's flying, it was a bit of a surprise. I have had my eye on this British made and designed um, eVTOL that they're building up in Banbury. One of the chaps involved in that is a chap called Jarp and he has a private airstrip in Kent and just chatting to him straight away he says well there's something on at the weekend, get yourself down here, meet some interesting people. Well he wasn't wrong, it's almost like to have a destination, some reason to go somewhere. I think that's what is the tricky thing to get right. Uh, then you've got a bit of a mission. So that's perhaps why you know, I'm looking at maybe some charity thing or something where I can help other people because if I'm taking the plane somewhere and it's gonna, you know, I'm paying for the fuel and everything, um, you know, my seat's mostly empty. Uh, so why not try and fill it? I'm based at Denham, which is West London. To get round here down to Kent, you don't go across Heathrow and, uh, and City, so you go round, you normally go round. Um, so it's about an hour's flight away. As we landed, we heard over the radio that the wasp was coming in behind us and about to land. So I jumped out quickly to see if I could catch it landing once again.
We all chatted for a bit, but it wasn't long before John Heath was ushering his passengers back on board the helicopter, ready for the journey home. Then it was our turn. I wasn't able to record any of our intercom chats because I needed an extra recording device, which of course I didn't have with me. Like any aircraft, there's always the pre-flight checks, which I found really interesting to watch. Then, I suddenly realised we were about to fly over my house.
there is something about the, the solo flight as well. It's a different type of flying and you are, you know, within your own thoughts. And obviously you're flying the plane. <laughs> we do have autopilot on this, so um, it is possible to uh, be hands-free, which is quite useful. People think that's a, uh, an unnecessary luxury, but actually it's, it's, it's a nice idea. I'm glad I have that. Generally, if I can fly with someone, I'd like to. Um, unfortunately, my, my teenage boys and uh, my wife, they get a bit sick. They're not really into it. I think, you know, at first I was pretty disappointed with that. I thought I had dreams of taking the family and maybe the son to, you know, on a long trip. They don't seem to be into it, which is fine. You know, everyone's got their own loves and passions. Oh, brilliant. John, thank you very much indeed. Eh? Yeah. Cheers. It's, it's been great to meet you. It's a pleasure and I've loved flying with you. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Well, any time. Well, I have to say, this has been an incredible, incredible afternoon. I've met so many really interesting people and uh, was taken on that flight, which was completely impromptu. And to get up close and personal with a, an old Navy uh, WASP helicopter was just brilliant. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I have had making it. So until the next time, thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Thank you.